Hey everybody, I'm Cindy Furch for Shore Local News and I am here at the grand opening of Black Turtle Coffee in Brigantine. I am so excited to be here with the owner, Brayden Anderson. Welcome, Brayden. Thank you so much. This is amazing and you came from Manhattan. What brought you to Brigantine? I, I, I've always loved South Jersey. I was more familiar with Ventnor um, and I bought a condo there a couple of years ago, kind of the beginning of the pandemic. Um, loved it so much and, and just continued to, to leverage the ability to work remote. I was a, I'm an attorney working out of a, a big Manhattan firm and um, you know I decided to double down. I lived here for a year. I was like, I'm going to double down. I, I'm going to get a place in Epsecon and, and you know get a little bit more space. And you know when I moved to Epsecon, I realized it was a lot easier to get to the beach in Brigantine. So I started coming here more and more and and I'm so so glad um, because I realize not just through the people that I've met um, you know but the beauty and just the, Brigantine's unique it's a gem and I think it's it's just such an underrated community and, and, and place to place to spend time and it's it's been it, it's just been great spending more time here that's fantastic and this is the grand opening today. You did a soft opening about six days ago yeah. and rave reviews, Brayden. What makes Black Turtle Coffee different? So I think there's a, there's a couple different things that, that make what Black Turtle Coffee does different than a Wawa or a Starbucks or some of you know, your, your generic coffee brands. Um, number one, it's, it's product, right? It's where do you source your beans and what happens to those beans along its, 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 its lifeline of, of getting to your cup, right? What happens to that bean? Where did it come from? We started with a single origin, all organic bean from Brazil after I sampled about 24 different beans from other countries, including Ethiopia. Um, you know, we looked at some Colombian coffees. We, I looked all over. I wanted to find a premium bean, right? I wanted to find something that not only would compete with the Blue Bottles and the Gregory's and the Joe's Coffee Projects and, and the craft coffee companies that I know and love and respect in Manhattan, but could blow them out of the water, right? And not only did I want to find that single origin premium bean, but I only want to do single origin premium organic beans. I don't want to have a generic option. And so I'm really proud to say that we don't. We only have single origin. And it's, it's exciting to be able to say that. And I, I also feel like the consumer education piece has been big because a lot of folks said, well, listen, people in Brigantine in South Jersey, they don't care about craft coffee. And I, and I really I, I really resented that and, and I felt like it wasn't true because what I've learned is people do care. If there's one thing I care about, it's my coffee. Like I love, coffee's important, yeah. it's very important. And when you taste the difference, right, there are people, I will say, who have come in and said, I haven't heard of what single origin means, right? And I don't, tell me about what this is. and. What is the difference between having my coffee, you know, off the shelf, right, from the supermarket or going to Dunkin' yeah. and this black turtle bombshell, black shell stuff that you're talking about, right? And it's, you know, it's a single origin product that we talked about that I mentioned before. And then the other piece is that it's fresh. Freshness is a huge, huge piece in the, in, in the coffee landscape, right? We roast our beans in-house. In house, you roast your beans here. We roast our beans here. Wow, nobody does that, Braden. That's amazing. Like that's really special. Yeah, I mean, investing in a coffee roaster was something that I was not initially going to do because it's expensive. It's a barrier to entry to break into the coffee industry. Can you buy a coffee roaster that can do volume? Right is a big question, and I was originally going to do what most coffee shops do. They go to a third-party roaster that does private label, and they slap their brand right all over the bags. I didn't want to do that because as I as I kind of dove in to that process, I realized that I wasn't going to have enough control over what was happening in that roastery to feel confident charging my customers for the premium product that I knew I wanted to 
to, to provide, right? Yeah. And so by controlling that process, by selecting the beans myself, by sampling them, by tasting them, by roasting them myself and looking at every single batch before it comes out and tasting it and looking at it and smelling it, I can guarantee that customers are getting what they're paying for, right? And so that's really what's been really exciting to me. Black Turtle Coffee really is demystifying luxury coffee, which is, is such a great thing because so many people, they know that this tastes better than that, but why is a whole nother story. Yeah, ex exactly. And I think what I've learned, and I alluded to this a little bit earlier, is that like when people are explained, here's what we do, here's why it tastes different, they want to learn. They want to be coffee experts. They they care as, as soon as they taste the difference, right? Whereas before, they didn't know, right? They, they grabbed their Wawa and they thought it was average. They didn't know that you could drink a extraordinarily better cup until they came here. And that's been a really, really cool thing is to see people, you know, be shocked and yeah. like, wow, like this, you know, because that's that's why you do it. You know, and that's what you envision when, when I was selecting the beans. I was I was envisioning customers who, you know, being shocked and excited uh, about how good the coffee was. And Absolutely. And I am still stunned by from the move, the transition from Manhattan to Brigantine in the winter months. That's kind of like polar opposites. Yeah but not anymore. We're seeing more consumers, more people able to live where they want to live. Are you seeing that too, Braden? Absolutely, and I, I doubled down on it hard um, at the start of the pandemic. I, I, I saw some trends. People thought I was a little bit crazy at the time that I did it um, because, you know, there wasn't certainty how long COVID would last, right? But, I, but you know what, my, my kids are in the area and it, it made sense for me to, to invest in South Jersey because this is it's a beautiful place and I, I actually there's a study that was done by Rice University that talked not just about the virus right but what are the impacts that a virus like this a pandemic like this has right on communities on property values on mass human psychology and this and this this research study talked about the, the primary the, the primary deal was people want to be in beautiful places, right? If you don't need to be right beside the office, if that's no longer a mandatory deal, because that's traditionally what's drove in real estate markets is where are the jobs? Where is the big industry? And so if I no longer have to be right beside the my employer to make money and I can live anywhere, where do I want to be? And I answer that question, the beach. And I'm happy to see that a lot of people have answered that question in the same way. By the way, Brayden, how tall are you? I am 6'8". Wow, I am, my arm is getting tired holding it up to you. I heard a rumor. Did you really play basketball for Seton Hall? I did play for Seton Hall. I played for Fresno State in Kansas before that, uh, but I finished my career off at Seton Hall. Um, happy to happy to say that uh, I was on the, the Villanova championship team uh, that, that beat Villanova in the, the Big East in 2016. Um, the Villanova conquering uh, Seton Hall team, I should say. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's exciting. There's, I've seen a lot of Seton Hall sweatshirts and, and gear, a lot of Seton Hall logos come in the shop. So it's been fun. Absolutely, Braden. This is such a cool place. Be sure to check it out. Revere Avenue in Brigantine. How can folks reach out to you on the, your website? Are you on social media? I'm on social media. So uh, our Instagram handle is Black Turtle Coffee. Um, you can reach me by email at uh, Braden at BlackTurtleCoffee.com. Um, you know, we're, we have a Facebook page. You know, any way you can hit, up, hit us up on the website. You can sign up for our newsletter. We're going to be doing some, some cool things um, in the next coming months. We're going to have more roasts, more different types of, of coffees, um, and we're going to have some coffee subscriptions that you can have ordered to your house. Um, so You just you. piqued my interest a lot. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. I, I love it, Brayden. I love everything about it. It's a must-try, everyone. Black Turtle Coffee in Brigantine. Thanks. I'm Cindy Ferch for Shore Local News.